The catch cry is drive or be driven. Now, what do you think we're talking about with that? Well, right there, we have the third generation Bentley flying spur. Now, the Bentley people told me last night that they've thrown everything and the kitchen sink at this new Bentley flying spur because it is an important vehicle sales-wise, potentially the third biggest seller in the range. In some markets, it will be the number one biggest seller. And I'll tell you why, because basically this is a technological tour de force if we are talking Bentley and the traditions of Bentley. It's all-wheel steer, it's all-wheel drive, there's dynamic ride, there's essentially everything that you can throw at a luxury car to get it to handle well. And that's exactly what we're gonna do shortly. Now the car is actually well over 5.3 meters in length. Uh, it is an enormous vehicle, folks. Um, bigger than a Panamera, Porsche Panamera. And yet they say it will handle like a well-honed sports car, if you like, or certainly a well-honed GT car, because that's what they're billing it as. And I think before we do that, and I'm still to be convinced about that, but we're in the south of France and we're about to embark on some very tight roads, which is where the rear wheel steer will come in, or the all wheel steer, and actually rotate this vehicle around some incredibly tight turns, they tell us. Um, not the sort of roads you'd probably embark on a trip if you owned this yourself, but in order to test it, that's what we'll do. So before we do that, we did look at this car earlier this year at the factory in Crewe and uh, everyone was mightily impressed. I mean, it's a brand new grill, as you can see, it's massive. Um, uh, but there also is sort of accents of old with this Bentley. So it's a really nice mix of old and new. And of course the uh, technology behind it, just to give you an idea of some of that technology, there are six radars in this vehicle. There are 15 cameras and there are a hundred ECUs. Um, to give you an idea of how much has gone into this vehicle to allow it to drive like we think it's gonna drive. But before we do that, let's refresh ourselves and let you know why Bentley is Bentley and what they do to the interiors of these cars is something quite special. The look and feel inside this Bentley Flying Spur is extraordinary. Um, and it all starts even from the key with this knurling effect here and the indentation of the Bentley, which is embossed on. I mean, it is just extraordinary. You could write books on the way the craftsmanship has put this interior together. But I mean, if you just look at the knurling effect on this starter button here, it also um, doubles as a um, drive selector from custom to sport to uh, Bentley mode. Um, the clock, I mean, this does look absolutely special. I was looking at this earlier today and the detail inside that face is just, it really just is extraordinary. More knurling effect on the air conditioning uh, temperature buttons. Folks, I nearly forgot the piece de resistance of this Bentley Flying Spur, and it's right here in front of us. You notice how this is a clean piano black line with a nice chrome line down the center. Well, watch this, folks. This is magic. You press the screen button, and away we come to complete digital enhancement screen. Do whatever you want, night vision. Then we can go around to the... Now, isn't that... That's actually a chrono. That That's an fantastic so that's three different screens you can have and of course when you turn it off back to magic land I mean everything is here people have said that there may be a bit too much piano black but I don't think so because it really does mold well with this uh, dual stitching contrast stitching on this um, particularly nice sort of wine colored red leather if you like um, technology wise, well, you know, there are very few buttons here, isn't there? There's probably a half a dozen in maximum. The rest of it's all touch screen. Um, for the infotainment display, that looks like about a 12.3 inch screen. Uh, also a virtual sort of cockpit style instrument panel in front of the driver. The knurling effect again continues on these instrument stalks here. I mean, wherever you look, there's craftsmanship uh, right up to the actual leather and the quilting that you get on this leather and the softness of the leather it all must be quite napper 
style leather, but the comfort is what uh, stands out in a Bentley from the carpet right through to the leather backs on these sports seats and the way they hold you in without being too definitively sporty, if you like, in terms of its bolster. So there you have it, the Bentley. I mean, it's all about the rear in this car. My opening uh, uh, drive or be driven, well, we spent the back uh, spent our time in the back of this car yesterday from Nice Airport up to Monaco and I mean the the, the rear legroom is just cavernous. I mean you could basically do a full stretch out here. Certainly I can and uh, I think that's really important for some markets where this car will be chauffeured um, uh, rather than driven itself. But anyway, why we're here is to let everyone know that, that Bentley's claims are true or not true, that this car handles like a well-honed GT car uh, that would keep up with the likes of an Aston Martin DB11, etc. So I think that's going to be the big surprise if it does. And without further ado, let's get into it. Bentleys have never been short on grunt. And this one certainly isn't, not with uh, 467 kilowatts and 900 newton meters. I mean, seriously, <laughs> top speed is 333 kilometers an hour. I don't think there's a faster four-door sedan. Um, it's certainly in this luxury segment that can rival a Bentley in terms of its cosseting that it uh, undertakes to um, provide its occupants. Anyway, 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds. And you know, you gotta remind yourself that this thing is over 5.3 meters in length, weighs 2.4 plus ton. And you know, you've got a whopping W12 engine up front there. And yet, you know, they tell us that you can literally smash this thing into corners. And the all-wheel steer, all-wheel drive, various drive systems and enhancement systems, dynamic systems that keep this thing on the road. Just massive amounts of grip. Absolutely massive. Or you can sit back and, you know, if you're in traffic, you just absolutely enjoy the sublime luxury that this flying spur delivers um, it'll lob into Australia but well in fact all markets they're hoping to have this car available in uh, first quarter 2020 um, so you don't have to wait long if you've uh, got the coin I mean for the first few minutes it, it appears uh, enormous uh, I mean, it might feel like driving that tank um, but once you, within five minutes, or certainly not two seconds in, but within five minutes, you've got the complete handle of this car, and there's really, really good feedback through the steering wheel of what those uh, massive front wheels are doing, um, which I really, really appreciate because you've really got some solid drivability in this car, and um, all those, all that all-wheel steer, all-wheel drive, uh, and the dynamic uh, ride control that you've got in this vehicle. It, it just all works in sync. Um, when you dial up sport, the uh, traction control system obviously loosens, and, uh, but never do you feel like this car is just a bit too much when you're throwing it into some really tight corners. Paddles work instantly, of course. Eight-speed dual clutch system. What's extraordinary is you've just got this massive uh, bonnet uh, and this width, you know, two meters almost. Um, and you can feel like you can really position this car perfectly um, to really hone through an apex exactly the way you want it to be and exactly where you want the car to be. Um, and no corner is too tight, really in terms of these sort of fantastic sort of mountain roads. I think Bentley have really achieved, um, I mean, it really is an impossible situation if you could make a car of these dimensions and this weight 
perform like it does here and feel quite natural and, and willing um, a willing partner to be driven in this manner that we and, and I think the um, biggest thing we were all wondering this morning why we were sent up on these incredibly tight roads incredibly small lanes which would have been tight in a Renault Clio um, certainly and and you know we were driving the flying spur through these uh, passages and it was I mean for I was in the passenger seat this morning and you I really thought we weren't gonna actually make it without a slight scrape at one instance and you know the car really uh, was just felt didn't feel at home of course but because it's so big but geez it's amazing what the engineers have done uh, with this group and with this car um, and it's you know the real that drive or be driven right the catchphrase I mean it does ring true with this vehicle um, so there you have it the Bentley third generation flying spur and it's a huge leap forward from the second generation in terms of drivability um, chassis balance everything I, I don't know how you could improve this car um, they can't you know we asked about you know even though the the body is all aluminium and, and it's uh, super formed aluminium um, can you lighten lighten it up but you can't the you know the fact that it's got those six radar 15 cameras a hundred different ECU units running all the systems that this car runs. I mean, it's just extraordinary. Um, but again, you always ask, you know, how, how can a car weigh 2.4 plus uh, ton? And, um, you know, people don't want to go without anything, whether it's um, seat heating or climate control. Um, they just don't want to leave anything to, to chance. So they want all the luxury. Um, but Bentley have made this car handle like a like a proper GT that probably weighs 1800 kilos which I just think is a, an amazing engineering feat if you ask me. So let's hope we um, obviously we're going to drive this car when it lobs into the car advice garage um, in Q1 2020 and uh, let's put it through some Australian road conditions um, and see if um, the suspension can handle the uh, multiple sharp edges you get on Sydney roads even.